Gardening today is really special. I'm taking you with me to a platycerium staghorn wonderland. My name is Irene. Welcome to my channel, Leafing Around, and let's go in. Hi. Hello, hello. Hi, Irene. Uh, oh, look at you. Yeah, Merry Christmas. <laughs> the dear man. Yes. <laughs> welcome in. Thunder welcome in. Rosa. Okay. Long. Tell me about this place. What what is it like? Is it a platy museum? Uh, all right. Yeah. Okay. This place is actually not much of really uh, dedicated platform. Mm -hmm. At first, you know, it's our office. Oh. You know, we wanted just to work here, mm -hmm. and uh, we we realized the sunlight here is really good. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, especially outdoor, you can have a look later. Okay. And uh, we suddenly have a really crazy idea, saying, "Hey, why don't we just build the biggest platform wall in our office?" And then we said, "Ah, oh, why not?" So from there. Yeah. So we start to build, start to collect the platform, and then I got really crazy about them. So we build specific fencing for them just to can hang, uh, hang all my uh, collective platycerum. Wow, so this is an office which you've turned into a platycerum yes, yes, yeah. gallery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, good. Maybe you could share a little bit about how you got into the love of platy. Oh, okay. It's really a long story. Mm -hmm. um, and I got the first platycerum, the, the really normal type one mm -hmm. is a bifurcatum. Mm -hmm. I got it as a gift from my mother-in-law. Ah. So uh, she told me she got it from a durian orchard okay. and she asked me what kind of plant is that. I, I yeah. realized that it's a stag horn. Mm -hmm. but at first, I, I don't grow any platycerum when I started aroids. Mm -hmm. So I realized that, oh, why don't I try on something else, you know? I wanted to try how they look like, what's their conditions. So I started to grow and um, I went on to internet and search. I realized that Japanese and Taiwan is so crazy about platycerum. Yeah. So I really got into that and got really mesmerized back about how they present the platycerum that looks like a piece of art. Yeah. So that's where I start. Ah, oh, okay. At, at almost the same period like uh, Aroid. All right. <laughs> yeah. About what, three years or so ago? Yes, three years, you know, but not as crazy as what you see right now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, so I have visited Lone earlier this year and if you want to see his garden, the link is right above at the video. But this place here is a recent development. So let's get started. All to right, sure, sure. Hello, tell me about this amazing platy wall. <gasps> <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Before we start, right, Irene, I, I don't know whether you noticed the sign. Mm -hmm. Please do not touch. No, <laughs> I know. Uh, the reason why we put this sign is that uh, a lot of my friends and uh, families came here to visit. They have no idea. Uh, some of the platyserms are really delicate. Mm. I, uh, we wanted to avoid touching them because of the trichomes. You will okay. lose the trichome. I will show you around later. Yeah. Especially this one. Okay. This is platyserum antis. Oh. It's one of the hybrid from, uh, with endinium mm -hmm. and elephant tortoise. Mm -hmm. The one of the uh, prominent traits of this particular species is that you can see the the trichome is really furry with all this really thick white uh, fur around. We call them trichome. Wait, trichomes are like this white dust? Yes, like a white dust, you know. Okay. But the reason why we wanted to handle it with care because uh, you might scratch off the trichome. Ah. That's what you can see. Camera, come closer and zoom in. Yeah. Oh. This is all the trichome. Some of my friends, they just scratch it. Oh, dear. Uh, uh, what right. is the function of the oh, trichome. Okay. The tr uh, in the natural habitats, uh, most of the platycerum has uh, trichome mm -hmm. to protect the direct harsh, sun, uh, okay. harsh uh, sunlight. Yeah. Some of them is that um, they will protect them from, uh, I think one of the functions is direct sunlight. Mm -hmm. Another one will be to protect excessive water, stay on the fronts Please? for too long. Okay. Yeah, that's why. But if you grow uh, them outdoor, yeah. some of the rainwater will flush them away. Hence, oh. the white trichomes will lose the characteristics okay. and it's not pretty anymore. Oh, yeah, okay. so the it's reason why also have to, for aesthetics. Yes, yes, for aesthetical value, especially Japanese and Taiwan. Yeah. They love white trichome platycerum oh, and they grow okay. them indoor. Hence, most of them here are very delicate uh, platycerum. Mm -hmm. So I move them indoor, I give oh. them cooler temperature okay. and uh, more consistent uh, climate uh, conditions for them to grow. I didn't realize platycerum appreciate cooler temperature Yes, as well. they do, they do, oh. they do. Especially this particular species. This is uh, platycerum Saikyu. How do uh, you spell that? S-A-I-K-A-E-W. Okay. From uh, one of the really uh, prominent uh, 
grower in Thailand. It's, it's a named, hybrid? It's a hybrid of Andinium with Willing Ki. Okay. So it, it, by Mr. Yud, if I'm not mistaken, it's a yeah. really renowned uh, Thailand hybrider. Mm -hmm. So you had crossed this hybrid with Andinium with Willing Ki. Mm -hmm. And one of the really prominent characteristics also because of the white trichome. You can uh, see the furry white trichome. Yes. And they almost look really silverish. Yeah. And one of my friends uh, accidentally scratched it. You can <gasps> see. You can scratch you. You should put like a fine for yeah. <laughs> X about. <laughs> Once touch, consider so. <laughs> now this is all the collections here. We are not really uh, ready for sale whatsoever. Yeah, I was about to say you don't even want to sell it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. true. <laughs> and uh, let me show you another one that is really, really uh, sought after by a global platinum lover. Yeah. This one, this is one of the platinum SS phone. Oh, okay. I heard. I, I, I heard Mr. Fong, right? He's yeah. one of the Malaysia grower. Mm -hmm. He crossed this hybrid <coughs> and he's selling globally. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's the most sold after platinum in the world right now. Really? Yes, Japanese, everyone, they love so that. After you tell the world, uh, more people <laughs> would yeah. look for it. <laughs> this is just only one of the hybrid uh, created by Mr. Fong. Okay. And there's a few more. Mm -hmm. And th this one, platinum Fong Si Chi. Yeah. Uh, Feng Shichi is, uh, is one of the platinum named after his daughter. Mm -hmm. So one of the main characteristics is that after this plant get mature, yeah. they will have a spore patch, right? Mm -hmm. If you realize the platinum will have a spore patch. Yeah. And the spore patch at the tip of here will start to curl. Okay. And it takes like <clears throat> years to grow to that form to show the full potential. It's funny you say that because I was trying to read out and understand more about Platy last night before okay. I see you okay. so that I don't appear to um, ignore it. And I saw people selling the Feng Si Chi tip spore? with the spore. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. So and how long okay. and how practicable it is to grow it from the spores? Uh, if you really want to grow them from spores, right, it yeah. takes years, years to germinate. After you germinate, you have to move them to stabilize the, the spallings. Okay. And then after the spalling, you have to wait them to stabilize in the smaller pots. Yeah. After the pots, you have to move them to plant, smaller plant. After a plant, it takes years to grow to a slightly bigger plant. So how, how many years would this have I grew been? this from a really small plant. I guess mm. it's almost this size. Okay. I bought it from Mr. Fong a really long time. I think two, one, or, one or two years ago. Yeah. And uh, about this size. Okay. And we reached to this. I believe the next new front coming up will curl. Mm. I will keep you updates you know, yeah. when it curls. And yeah. Because the uniqueness is it Yes, really it's the curling, the fingers, they say. I hope I can find you a mature yeah. picture and share that with you. It's yes, really yes, amazing. Yes. Lone, I have to ask, how do you keep them in such pristine condition yeah. indoor. That's a trick, you know. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think sunlight is really important okay. you know, for platyserum. They grow under the canopy of forest, mm -hmm. so they don't prefer direct sunlight. Mm. But some of them, they can uphold a, a bit of direct sun, but uh, most of them, they prefer sh filter. Okay. Uh, maybe 50% of shades. Mm -hmm. So uh, we purposely uh, import a lot of grow light for them to keep happy indoor, <laughs> to keep, how, keep them happy indoor. How many hours of this light do you have to uh, when, have to when our staff come in at 9 o'clock, they would just switch on the light. Mm -hmm. And then uh, until they went back home, they would just turn off the light. I think it's about 8, eight, eight hours, okay. 8 or 9 hours sometimes. Like really mimicking uh, the yes, natural yes, sunlight. Yes, yes, yes. And other than sunlight, the second, uh, the most important thing is the airflow. Okay. So you have to keep them happy because when you water the plants, right, you have yeah. to, you have to make sure the the moisture will evaporate. Mm -hmm. So we keep the fans open after a really heavy watering. Okay. And then I will get another extra fan. <laughs> okay. Just to uh, keep the moisture. Uh, the ventilation. Yeah, the ventilation. Okay. To to go uh, to won't be stuck for too long because I remember this one. Mm -hmm. This is the one of my mistakes that I've done. And uh, I water my plant. This is yeah. and I forgot to own the fans for two days. <gasps> Saturday okay. and Sunday because we are not working. Yeah. So we come back here. The first thing that I see is this Oh this, this is a bit of a fungus infection. Uh -huh. If it get really uh, um, heavy infestations, yeah. I, we will have to just cut off to, to prevent it to spread. Yeah, I was about to ask you, do you not want to cut it yet? I, I, I have no idea. I wanted to, but i uh, kind of reluctant to cut it since it's really <laughs> growing into the full form. Because uh, oh. we, don't, we don't see the Feng Shi Chi has, has this tall uh, shield uh, crown. Yes. And uh, most of them, they will just have a little bit of uh, 
shoe fronts and then the, the, the yeah, photo Yeah, I see mostly are, this. Yeah, the, the characteristics. I keep touching, I would have to step further away. <laughs> one so yeah, one touch is considered so one. Uh, that, that I would be touching a lot. <laughs> Okay. So, yeah. So, um, like what we mentioned previously, there's a few uh, platyserum that's uh, really sold after. Like oh Mr. wait, Fong before species. that, still yeah. about platyserum care. So, uh, do do you care like the humidity? I I see. Oh yeah, you have yeah, this yeah, yeah. We have this uh, thermometer to keep track the humidity and the temperature. What humidity would keep it at? Uh, anything that not lower than fifty percent will do. Oh okay. Yeah. So about sixty five is fine. Mm -hmm. It's fine. Uh, sometimes it drop until like 50, 55, but still okay. Okay. But uh, I, I uh, mainly observe that humidity is not really a primary concern for them. Oh. It's about the temperature. Oh, what is Whether, the temperature yes, then? Yes, if the temperature is too hot, mm -hmm. you will see some of their, uh, you know, the fronts will start to become floppy. Oh. Really soft and floppy. That's so, what's yeah. happening to mine. Yeah, so, so when, when the condition is good, it's cooler, it's chill, you will see they, are, they start to perk up. Oh. And then it will become, uh, it, they, they prefer that way, they prefer that way. Okay. So the temperature was about like 25 to 27. wonder how do you water the platyserum indoor oh okay because uh, I keep the fans on mm -hmm. they kind of need frequent watering sometimes okay and uh, normally what I did is I would just touch touch the moss mm -hmm. so, uh, for example this one is quite dry this is another phone mm. it's quite dry you can see and this is all the roots you know this is the roots ah, okay so when I feel that it's dry mm -hmm. so I just start to water them and Usually we'll have uh, I will have a basin, so I just sunk it, dip it in, dip it, or I can use the water just to make the moss ball wet. Okay, and how often are you watering them? Uh, two to three days. Every two to three days. Every two to three days. Okay. So, do you want me to show you the water? Yeah, can you well, show? I think yeah. it will be like yeah. very interesting to see. So what I did was just make the moss ball wet. Try to avoid uh, watering on the fertile front of this map. Avoid the fertile front when you water? Yeah, I watch water on them because oh, I, I want to keep the keep, yes. Yeah. Oh just my make goodness. them wet. I think it's easier to raise a child. Take care of the Yeah, true story. <laughs> true story. So I'll make sure the moss ball is wet. Wow. Okay, alone you have maybe I'm eyeballing, I don't know, about nearly 50 platy. You do this to all your platy? Yes, one by one. Oh my god. <laughs> it requires a lot of patience. Yeah. Wow. So when I water them, I will just put them back into that. Okay. Wow, that requires real dedication. At first I thought you kind of just hose it down and then wipe and mop the floor. No, I, I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't do that because when I, when I hose them, yeah. uh, like what I mentioned previously, the water will flush away the charcoal. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Wow, you have to really love that. What, charcoal? Uh, yeah, the trichomes is like the white trichomes. On the platy to do this. <laughs> I know you have some very unique and special platys here. Maybe you can talk us through some of the unique ones. Oh, okay. Um, this one is another from Xi Qi. Wow. <laughs> yes, I got from Mel. Yeah. Mel, Mel Plan, I don't know whether you know that. And uh, if you really want to talk about the, the classics, the classic that we have to collect, mm -hmm. and, uh, it's the DW series. We call them the Diversifolium cross with Okay. There's a few types of uh, DW. Mm -hmm. It's the same uh, parent, mm -hmm. but different form of child. All right. It's like uh, when uh, you and a husband married, you got different type of children, right? Yeah. They all looks the different. Uh, looks different. Okay. That's the DW series they have right now in the market. Oh. One of them is this. It's uh, Omo. What? That is um, Omo. Omo. O M O. Is it's, that like the washing detergent? Yes, 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 yes. The washing <laughs> detergent. The reason why is because it's so white that it looks like it's bleaching. Oh. 
this DW series are they hybrids from Thailand? Yes, yes. Ah, okay. And uh, this is one of them called Omo. You can see it's wow. really, really white. And even Thai Taiwanese gave them a name called White Lover. Okay. It looks like a bison, yeah, right? Oh. <laughs> yeah, this one. And uh, another one will be this one, Pegasus. Okay. This one look a bit sad because I cut away all the all fronts because it's uh, a bit of fungal infection. Okay. I cut them away and I, they are trying to regenerate back right now. You can see the new fronts is going. Mm. And I think I did this one, yeah. the fertile fronts is coming out. Another DW will be this one, White Hawk. They okay. call them White Hawk is the reason why that the fertile fronds spread like a wings mm -hmm. and it's really symmetrical. Okay. Yeah, this one is White Hawk. Another one will be Paul Vespa. Paul Vespa? Yeah, Paul Vespa is uh, the cross of DW also. Okay. Never see for them with link here. P A U L V E S P A. Okay. Like the motorbike. I was thinking that. Yes, Are you yes. I, I have no idea how the they name the blood serum. <laughs> uh, this is another DW. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, that's all the DW I have. And uh, there's a few more I, I would like to show you also. Are, are there fairly new hybrids that has come into yes, the market? Yes, like what I told you, uh, Ray Ray, yeah. Ray Richong. There's a lot, there's a lot. If you really want to calculate the hybrid in the market, it's more yeah. than 1,000. Yes, it's I only mean these DW are, ones. Th these W are the ones that exist in the market for, for quite some time already. Okay. And they are quite uh, easily recognized. Yeah. And, uh, and it's been collected really long time ago. Ah, okay. So they are kind of famous in the platinum group. Okay. So if you really want to talk about those that are not really famous in Malaysia, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot. Probably this one we, we, we can talk about. What is that? It, this one, it has a name called uh, Monkey North. Monkey North. Monkey North. Okay. Monkey. Monkey. North. Okay. South, North, and something like that. Yeah. You know the directions. They call Monkey North. Okay. I got it from uh, my friends, Aerial Roots. Mm -hmm. So uh, he he helped me to get it. this one. It's a hybrid of uh, Vechii crossed Vilinkii. Okay. Hence, you can see Vechii has the erected front. Yes. And then it has a really high crown. Mm. And when it got mature, this fertile front will get longer and it droop it down. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wow. And another one is the most uh, sought after. The price is even crazier than Aeroid. Okay. It's this one, Platysum Celso. Celso Tatusa. Can you, yes. like, where is this from? I've got it from Taiwan, mm -hmm. Celso Tatusa. And uh, I got it from my friends and as a gift for me. Oh, so, nice. yeah, it's still a little spoiling. What, uh, what, what is it? Like a new hybrid? Oh. Uh, it's a selected... Uh, because... Uh, um, okay, the name called Tatusa because it's, it's grown by uh, one of the really famous uh, growers in America. Okay. It's, it's a Brazilian Japanese, if yes. I'm not mistaken, I forgot his name. Excellent. But his uh, surname is Tatusa. Ah. He's a Japanese, but he lives in uh, Miami. Okay. There's a few series of uh, Tatusa. Yep. Miami Tatusa, mm -hmm. uh, Dwarf Tatusa, wow. uh, Pedro Tatusa, okay. Celso Tatusa. There's a lot. <laughs> There's a lot. And uh, I, I only managed to get this one. Okay. And this one is one of the really beautiful uh, wedding here that we can find in the market. Ah. It's not a hybrid, it's mm -hmm. another cultivation of wedding here. Oh, it's a cultivar yeah, of wedding It's a cultivar, yeah. yeah. I so see. if you can find it uh, online, you can see how mature uh, it looks like, and it's okay. really beautiful. Uh, Taiwanese call them the butterfly. The butterfly. The okay. butterfly. Yes. I'm and uh, and uh, let me show you here. This one is another one that which I don't know what the hybrid is about, but I can definitely see there's a gene of Helii mm -hmm. and a little bit of uh, Mao Lewis. Okay. Mao yeah. Lewis uh, is another uh, form of uh, Bifurcatum. Okay. So you can see. With yes. the fingers and stuff. Wow. And uh, this is another cultivar of uh, Kili. It's called Aucha. Mm -hmm. I forgot how to spell the name, but it's, uh, it's a it's a Thai Thai name. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, this one is Blue Vista. It's a red cross crossed with uh, Vin Kili. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes I collect a lot of uh, platysium that is not known yet. Like this one, I got it from one of the collectors. Would you say for collectors, they uh, value the species more or uh, hybrid is also very interesting for them? Uh, it, it, it really depends. You know, some people, they collect the, like, um, uh, uh, partic uh, like particular kind of uh, traits of uh, platyserum. Mm -hmm. But for me, I will look at each species have their own unique characteristics mm -hmm. and then I would love to appreciate them. Yeah. So I grow all kind of platyserum. Oh, okay. As long as you kind of like like yeah, how, yeah, how they yeah. look. 
So this is one of really old hybrids from America. It is Ripple, mm -hmm. Plantation Ripple. Mm -hmm. If you can find the mature pictures online, you can yeah. see it's really nice. Ah. And uh, this is Royal Park. I believe I uploaded to my Instagram. <laughs> you know, uh, because I'm not very familiar with Platy. Okay. I hate to say this, but they kind of look very similar yeah, to yeah. me at the moment. And, and that's the reason <laughs> why, as a Platy serum lover, it takes yeah. time and patience yes. to grow them so that they can reach their full potential to show you how they look like. Yeah. So it takes like more than two to three years. Only wow. you can see that this is the full form of the Platy serum. Yes. So not much of people really appreciate it, and the price is not. Uh, uh, as uh, affordable as another house plant. Yes. So okay. it's it kind of uh, slightly expensive than a uh, house plant because it takes years to grow them from spores. Yeah. And it takes a lot of time to mount them on board, you know, yes. to, to grow them. And, and then uh, the way you have to take care of them, it's yeah. amazing the effort. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it requires a lot of effort. <laughs> yes. Alone, I see there's more outside. Let's go there. Yeah, yeah. Let me show you around. Yes. Yes, those are the huge type of plastic swim that I can't be able to keep indoor. Okay, so I, I love the top tree that's so yes. huge. What are those? Uh, this one is endemic in uh, Southeast Asia region, Hotumiai. Ah, this I have this. Hotumiya. Yes, this is Hotumiai. Okay. And uh, one day. One day, yeah. And Grande. Ah. I, I can't be able to call it another huge one, it's super bird. Yeah. It can't be able to grow uh, in, in our uh, local climate. Because it's too hot here? Uh, they say it's too wet. Oh. Super bird requires a bit more dry, dry. conditions. Yeah. Because it's I, I never try. I never try. Yeah, but some, some growers manage to grow them here. Okay. I never try. Yeah. Well, hopefully one day. Hopefully. Okay. So, yeah, these three species here is yes. the biggest one. And, uh, Are they like, uh, they belong to some group called the Big Four or something? Yeah, they call them Big Four. So it's this Hotumiai, Grande, One Day, one one day, day Grande, Grande and the Superbum. Those super are the Crown-like Big Four. Okay. And another one that you can find commonly in Malaysia Yeah. is this Coronarium. Coronarium. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Right. So uh, because it forms into a crown-like shape when yeah. it's mature enough and I prefer this is the long fronds that we try to make like a Why didn't it make it into the big four? I have no it's idea. <laughs> no <laughs> idea. Because um, I think this is almost the biggest size that it can grow. Yeah. With one day, if you really want to compare, this is still like, like a teenager. Really? Yes, it, it can wow. grow up to like 10 times of the size wow. of what you see right now. Okay. Do you feel like this one, they, they love a bit more light? They love a lot of lights and oh. it takes up a lot of space. No wonder because mine is in a very shaded area and it's like, oh, did okay. not grow. And, and they, they prefer a lot of uh, water. Okay. Because of the crown light uh, fronds, they collect the dead leaves from okay. the forest canopy and uh, all the water will drop into the, oh. the crown. Okay. They're collecting a lot of leaf leaves just from the, uh, and also the rainwater. I see you have a Ridley eye. Yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. I grow this, uh, uh, I got this from Jet. Yeah. Jet and his pond. Mm -hmm. He gave it as a gift. Hey, you yes. have many nice friends to give you <laughs> gifts. <laughs> so, uh, because I appreciate them. So, yeah. hence I really, really grow them into the full form. Yes. I grow them from a really small size, if yeah. you look at my Instagram. And yeah. This is what you can see right now. It's so beautiful, yeah. the texture. So how many years it took from a small uh, size to this? I think it's about one and a half year. It's almost two years uh -huh. to grow to this okay. size. Oh. And it can grow up to, I think, uh, bigger. Yeah. It can grow bigger. And uh, do you want to talk about this one? It's this is really, yeah, yes. And it, 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 it's a really selected uh, uh, white front. And it got a champion in 2018. They called it the Monkey King. The monkey king. Yes, yes. They call it the white form really. Uh, yeah. But this market. is wider than the normal white front. That's okay. <laughs> the wider form. Yeah, yeah. So it, that's why they selected this and then they compete in the French show. Uh -huh. And it, I think it's 2018 they got a championship. Wow. Yeah. Okay. But I have heard and also from my own experience, really I actually is quite difficult. Yes, yes, yes. It, I am not recommend for, for beginners to grow really I. Yeah. And it, 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 it kind of uh, requires some skill to mount them. 
uh -huh. and also to water them too. So, yes, uh, because really, as you can see, the way they grow the shield fronds, right, they cover up their own uh, the rhizome yes. to prevent excessive moisture going to the root ball. Could you give me a few tips because I've killed oh, okay. a few. Uh, I've killed three <laughs> really. <yeah. laughs> Really, I need a uh, really good amount of sunlight. Oh. Hence, you don't see I grow really, really indoor. Okay. And uh, they prefer a bit shaded. Okay. Bright sunlight, but shaded, and yeah. they don't like too many water. They like. I water light. them about like one and a half uh, weeks once. Huh? Yes, yes, yes. Oh my god! Because when they wrap around, it it is is a bit moist inside. So I don't water them really I used often. to water my every day. No, no wonder no, they die. Yes, they will rot and die. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Okay, let's see what else we have here. Uh, probably want to talk about this one. It's a really special uh, Wallachia. Ah, okay. Yeah. It, it, this is yeah. the only species of Platycerum will go dormant. Oh. When it's dry and hot. Okay. Uh, it's endemic in Thailand, Chiang Mai. Okay. So it's waking up right now. That's why you can see. Mm. It just wake up from his deep sleep. sleep. I think okay. months ago, and. Uh, Wow. Is that, that one? the Madagascar? Yes, 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 Madagascar means. They say it's difficult to grow here. Yeah. But I managed to grow them. Okay. Not, not perfect. Yeah. But yes, they are growing. They need uh, shaded and a lot, a lot of moisture. And it's not endemic in Asia region. I think it's South, ah. South America. I forgot the place already. It looks shaded, a lot of moisture. It sounds like the perfect platy for me because <laughs> my area but is they shaded. Prefer cooler temperature too. Okay. Yeah, that's why I put it a bit under uh, the one, the, uh, one day. Wow. And uh, there's a few more you wanted to see. This is the elephant tortoise. Oh. It hasn't grown. Oh the, my god, there's so many pups. Yeah, this is a pups that I talked to, uh, talk to you just now. I thought elephant tortoise would have these two. Um, yes, they have, but uh, it drops. Oh, it drops. okay. <laughs> And right. uh, this is another elephant tortoise hybrid. Stemaria okay. crossed with uh, elephant tortoise. It's ah. called uh, Kangkor. Okay. Or typical people call them Batman. I don't know why, because of the cape, the, like yeah. a Batman. Yes. And uh, this one is also elephant tortoise hybrid. Oh. It's uh, Madagascarians crossed with elephant tortoise. That's why you can see it has a Madagascar characteristics. Yeah, I like yeah. that. It's like a It looks like a waffle. Yeah, yes. Looks like a waffle, right? Yum. I'm very hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> we need to shoot faster that I can yeah. eat lunch. <laughs> so, do you want to wow. talk about that? It's, what is uh, it's a hybrid of uh, Grande with Relii. Oh, what is that called? Uh, Thousand Hand Joe. Thousand Hand Joe. Joe, it's Joe. I just call him Joe. J O E Joe. Okay. <laughs> I, I love both. Is it something that's quite um, easily found? Uh, yes. At okay. this moment, yes, you can find an online seller that are selling okay. this particular species. That's and there's another name, a name for this particular hybrid. It's called Grand Deer. I think it's from Thailand. Okay. This one from uh, Taiwan. Yeah. And this is the classic uh, uh, platyserum. It's called Charles Effort. Oh, yeah, I've heard. Yes, of. It's, it's one of the renowned uh, platyserum botanists. Mm -hmm. So uh, they name after him. It's a cross of one day with Ridia. Okay. One day and Ridia. It's yeah. amazing how you uh, like remember, remember <laughs> like. <laughs> The parents. <laughs> For the sake of fun. And this is the one that I'm talking about, Kichakuts. Yeah. It's a natural hybrid, they say. Yes. It's a natural hybrid of uh, coral rhenium with uh, Rilia. Ah, okay. I have this and um, yes, I hope you can help me. Collection, like, do you see more and more collectors coming in? Uh, if you talk about globally, yes, there's a lot of people are uh, really collecting the uh, exotic platyserum. Okay. But local, uh, especially Malaysia, most of most of them only collected those uh, endemic species, mm. uh, coralinium, really, uh, those are uh, really normal type. Yeah. Um, but I can see that because of Instagram, yeah. we can easily find all the beautiful hybrids around in the globe. Mm -hmm. So especially Japanese and Taiwanese. Yeah. There's a bunch of them really crazy about platyserum. Yes, when I'm on Instagram and hashtag platyserum, it's mostly the Japanese. Yes, Japanese. Collectors. And the only Japanese, they are the only one that grow indoors with uh, really dedicated grow lights and you know, fans and stuff. That's the thing I'm trying to learn from them. Okay. They are really kind of like, I can only use the word like professional. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
professional I'm platinum right grower. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in Malaysia, yes, we are picking up. I can see there's a lot of people jumping in, ask about platinums, you know, they ask me about how you mount platinum, mm -hmm. how do you grow them, how do you care them. I can see that they are they are showing some interest. Okay. They're showing some interest. It's just that they don't know where to start. Mm -hmm. Like what I told you, uh, most of the platinum that we find in on Instagram are Japanese. Yes. Hence they can't really know the species name. Okay. That's why. Uh, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, and they, they don't label they don't, what. They don't label at what all. What platinum? Yeah. Is so uh, uh, myself, I will try to see the form, the way they grow. Then I only can be able to guess. It's just a guesswork. Mm. Some of them they will put some IDs over there, yeah. but platinum is really difficult to identify because of almost a similar. I know. It takes years for you to discern yes. the traits. Yeah. So yeah, that's why it needs some time to uh, pick up the skill. Yeah. See what's the difference of the species. Then you only start to fall in love, see what, which one is more preferable to you. And it's really a long-term relationship to see <laughs> it grow and bloom. Of course, I, 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 I'm more uh, dedicated because I got one particular space for them. Yeah. But if you're at home, you can start to grow uh, really high coronium, uh, bicocatum, all the really easily for you to start with. Okay. Those are the easier ones to, to, to go in first. Yeah, yes, because yeah. I think people may have believe that you need an outdoor garden to have platycerum but now we've seen that hey you could do this indoor if you have enough dedication <laughs> to do so the right condition the grow yeah. lights you know yeah. the fans and uh, yeah okay the time of course yes. the time good all right i think that Lo, thank you very very much for showing me around here okay. and also giving uh, some guides and tips on how to take care of the platy. Right, no so, um, well, I'm very hungry now. I want to go for lunch. <laughs> so, until my next video, we see yeah. you farewell. Oh, remember to click subscribe and share with others if you enjoyed this platy video. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> 很宽的这个